Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Jean-René Clemenceau and I will be presenting our project on how analyzing spatial heterogeneity of tumor mutation burden and immune infiltrates on whole slide images signals correlations with bladder cancer survival. A little bit of background on tumor mutation burden. It is defined by the number of somatic mutations divided by the length of the sequence queried in megabases. It's usually calculated from whole exome sequencing and it's a promising biomarker for immunotherapy in diverse cancers. Why are we looking at it? Well, muscle invasive bladder cancer has really low survival rates, um, high relapse rate, and it has a low response rate too for a lot of the FDA approved biomarkers for their modern therapies. There are some limit limitations to TMB, however. It is sequencing based, which means uh, it can be expensive and time consuming. And if we're going to use gene panels, there's a lot of work to be done to determine what's clinically useful and it does not account for the complexity of the tumor microenvironment. So why are we looking at image detection and spatial analysis? Well, um, diagnostic slides are standard of care and they're virtu virtually ubiquitous. Um, also, muscle invasive bladder cancer is a highly heterogeneous disease, not only physically, morphologically, but also um, molecularly. And images can capture morphological features of the tumor microenvironment. So, um, in addition, spatial colocalization of tumor regions and immune cells has been associated with clinical outcomes in other cancers, such as in, bladder, in uh, breast cancer, like the Yuan group has shown. Um, and using this approach has the potential for fast and low-cost biomarkers in the future. The hypothesis for our work is that whole slide image analysis methods can capture morphological features of cancer tissue with high mutation burden, and then their spatial distribution and colocalization with tumor lymphotraining lymphocytes can inform patient outcomes. To do this, we're going to be looking at three different data sets. First is the Cancer Genome Atlas Bladder Cancer data set, which was obtained in a prospective study. Uh, it's mostly going to be used for training. Uh, the patients are treatment naive, except for Bacillus colmeguerin, which is an intravesical um, type of immun immunotherapy, but it's basically local. The tissues were, ta that were taken and the slides were prepared from the fresh frozen tissue and it's, they were obtained from several institutes. The first cohort we're going to talk about is our TMB validation cohort, which was also collected in a prospective study. Uh, the patients, however, are refractory, which means that they had multiple lines of treatment and they uh, relapsed, basically. The tissues uh, were preserved in uh, uh, formalin-fixed uh, paraffin-embedded slides and they are also from multiple, multiple institutes. For survival analysis, we're gonna use a retrospectively collected um, images uh, from refractory patients, also from FFPE slides. Uh, for the TCGA data set from the 412 page or original patients reported, we w looked over the images and removed the ones that were either too annotated or low quality, and we ended up with 368 images from 307 patients. Uh, overall, uh, the data sets have some similarities and some differences. Uh, the ages are a little narrower. The distribution of ages are narrower for the BLAST1 cohort, and they tend to have a higher TMB values. On the other hand, um, the CCF cohort does not differ in sex or age. However, we might have uh, underrepresented a Asian population, and our survival days are different, but that's because we're considering survival from diagnosis to last known will date, which uh, is a wider range than just the study itself. And it's not that relevant because we're only looking at survival differences within um, cohorts. Now let's go do an overview of how we detected tumor inf infiltrated lymphocytes and tumor mutation burden. First, we um, performed tumor detection, which was done using a VGG16 based architecture of a convolutional neural network trained on annotated uh, whole slide images by a pathologist. And we put in the whole slide image and we, we get a tumor binary mask from our model. And this, this had pretty good performance with a 90% dice coefficient. Then we um, select representative tiles, and this is done by uh, inputting the whole slide image and the tumor mask, and then from the tumor regions, we 
divided into non-overlapping tiles of 256 micrometers squared. Then we calculate local binary pattern features for each of the tiles and apply affinity propagation clustering. This uh, allows us to select the exemplars from each cluster as representative tiles for the, for the whole tumor. Then we perform feature extraction using uh, transfer learning of an exception model trained on ImageNet, where we keep all the layers except for the softmax classifier. This uh, yields us a 2048 dimensional vector on which we apply principal component analysis and keep the top 100 principal components. So the input is each individual slide of each individual tile image for each slide, and then we receive a 100 dimensional feature vector. Then we perform the TMB classification, and this is done with uh, support vector machine models, either with linear or Gaussian, Gaussian uh, radial basis function. We use our labels from the TCGA data set using 66 percentile or 7.8 mutations per megabase as TMB high, and the 33rd percentile or 3.75 mutations per megabase as a low cutoff. Then we input the 100 dimensional feature vectors, and we receive two different types of outputs. First is the tile level prediction of tumor mutation burden, which are predictions based on the exemplars that are assigned to the rest of the tiles of the corresponding clusters. And then for the patient level, we average out the tile feature vectors weighed by cluster size, and we determine the patient level TMB that way. On to the results of our approach. Our proposed model performed pretty well um, compared to Others uh, of different types, we tried different uh, uh, convolutional neural networks that uh, are common and perform well in other, in other areas like ResNet-18, VGG-16. We tried a uh, public, uh, published uh, multiple instance learning method for um, to, uh, tissue uh, digital pathology and also uh, another locally designed uh, convolutional neural network and also trying the local binary pattern features directly on the SVM. Uh, and the best that we found was the when we used our, mod, our pipeline without the representative tiles, however, that had high computational cost. And when we applied the, look, the representative tile selection, we only dropped around 0 0.02 um, on the AUC. Then we went ahead and performed TMB validation, prediction validation using the BLAST1 cohort. We used the same th thresholds as, the, as the, um, the TCJ data set. However, that yielded us a fairly imbalanced data set, uh, mostly skewed towards TMB high. Uh, for that reason, we used the precision recall curve to look at our performance, and we had pretty good AUPR accuracy and F1 scores. However, we have to keep in mind that it's a small data set and it's um, imbalanced. So now that we have these tile level predictions, what do, you, what do we do? We decided to take a look at um, the spatial heterogeneity of this TMB prediction by using the Shannon entropy of, of these predictions. And this is basically thinking about the average uncertainty in predicting the value of the next tile. You can think about it like that. And over here, we can see that in ground truth, whole exome sequencing derived TMB values, um, they, they match with uh, TMB high. This is predicted TMB high. And when we look at low heterogeneity, we see that most of the tiles have TMB high values. However, when we see high heterogeneity, high TMB prediction, we see that there's a wide variety of tile um, TMB values. And we see this the same on the low end of uh, of uh, ground truth TMB values, we see the low heterogeneity is mostly blue, mostly low, and with high heterogeneity, we see a wide range of tile values. So how does this affect survival? We try to look at survival using only TMB predicted value alone, and we didn't see a survival difference. However, when we consider the spatial heterogeneity of TMB uh, with uh, tumor mutation burden, we see that low heterogeneity, high predicted um, patients had significantly better survival than the rest. So that was pretty encouraging. Now, how does this compare to sequencing-based TMB? So in order to look at that, we took only the whole exome sequencing ground truth derived TMB value high patients, and we looked at the TMB predicted high patients with low heterogeneity, 
and compare them to the rest, and we see that we have a significant difference in survival. And this indicates to us that our approach is providing additional information beyond the uh, abilities of the sequencing-based methods. Now, what about lymphocyte infiltration? We perform uh, tumor infiltration, infiltrating lymphocyte prediction using a uh, ResNet-18 CNN utilizing a uh, pan-cancer TIL data set from the SALTS group. And we input the whole slide image and receive a heat map of TIL probabilities from which we select uh, high TIL images, uh, tiles with, for the ones that have a higher probability than 0.5. And from there, we consider a patient to be TIL high if the ratio of lymphocyte tiles to tumor tiles is higher than the median of the, the ratio in the cohort. Once we had this information, we took a look at, at their spatial distribution, and we found that there were distinct colocalization patterns across different groups. For example, the TIL high, TMB high, low heterogeneity group had a lot of overlap, versus um, the TIL low, TMB high, and low heterogeneity group, and there are others. So maybe there's something there in survival there. So what we did is we looked at TIL, TIL high, TMB high, and low heterogeneity groups, and they had a higher survival rate than the patients that had uh, similar TMB characteristics, but low TILs, and the others. So we decided to validate this this these results on our on our Cleveland Clinic cohort, and we actually found that the uh, response was different. The high T TIL, high TMB, low heterogeneity was actually the group that was performing the worst, but in a non statistically significant manner. Now there are some considerations for this. Uh, the Cleveland Clinic patients, like I said, tend to be sicker. They tend to have previous patient, uh, treatments, sometimes even six. Uh, the slides are different. Uh, their clinics are F FFPE, TCGA is left frozen, although that doesn't seem to be an issue on the BLAST cohort. And um, for the CCF patients with more than one slide per patient, we saw that half of them had at least one of the, of the images uh, had a different uh, TMB prediction value. Also, something to see is that the TCGA images tend to have large tumor, uh, large contigu contiguous tumor images, whereas the Cleveland Clinic, a lot of them had these lower um, chunks of tumor. So how else can we look at this? Is there a better way to measure colocalization? Since uh, TIL high, TMB high, and heterogeneity values don't really measure interaction directly. Well, we decided to look at the Morisita Horn Index, which is an index usually used in ecology and that has also previously been used to identify associations between tumor and lymphocyte overlap with breast cancer survival. And we see here when we have a high Morisita Horn Index, we see a lot of lymphocytes overlapping with the TMB high regions, whereas when we have low index, we see almost none of that overlap. In addition, we saw that high TILs, high TMB, high spatial heterogeneity don't necessarily mean that you're going to have high overlap. And um, this, uh, this is an example here of a, high, a low TIL, TMB high with high overlap uh, slide where, we, where most of the lymphocytes are in the TMB high regions. And this is a TIL high, TMB high patient with low overlap where most of the Lymphocytes are actually sort of in the tumor areas that are not TMB high. So we looked at the survival differences with uh, using Morisita Horn Index and uh, TIL prediction, and we see no difference in survival. And uh, we, just, we determined um, Morisita Horn high, uh, overlap high patients as the, uh, the threshold was the median uh, for the cohort. So... In conclusion, we were able to predict TMB using only whole slide images. We identified spatial heterogeneity of TMB as a factor in survival outcomes, at least in TCGA. The image-based prediction segregated patients beyond what whole exome sequencing could do alone. 
and we identified a potential spatial interaction between lymphocytes and TMB high areas. And something to think about is that tumor mutation burden is generally only considered as a single value biomarker in the literature, but our results may suggest that considering its spatial characteristics may be a valuable consideration. Now, there are limitations to our study. The Cleveland Clinic and BLAST cohorts may not necessarily reflect the TCGA cohort since they have later stage of disease, metastatic disease, uh, multiple lines of treatment, the tumors, uh, tissue area is different. Uh, the BLAST1 TMB validation cohort is relatively small and heavily TMB high skewed. So we need larger and better annotated cohorts, which we are actually working on. We're still collecting information. We are working on sequencing some of our uh, blo tissue blocks. And our model could also benefit from more multi-institute data sets with diverse disease stages for training and validation. And with that, I would like to thank you all for being here. Thank you to the Huang Lab and our collaborators in China, Korea, and the Cleveland Clinic, as well as our funding sources. And I'm open for questions.